Nadine, back to you. Nadine, thanks very much for that. Nadine Howard there from CNBC Arabia. Let's focus on the currency markets now, though. Take a quick look first at what's going on. Uh, with, the, uh, with the dollar. The euro is actually uh, losing some ground against the dollar, down by about 8 tenths of 1%. Sterling, too, down by about 1.5% uh, against the dollar. Let's uh, speak to Ross Berland, who's head of corporate dealing at Rational FX. Uh, Ross, mm -hmm. um, various movements going on today, particularly um, for, for some of these European currencies. I mean, we've got the ECB coming out with its interest rate decision later in the week. Is that, is that what's undermining the euro? Well, looking forward to that, uh, it's going to be very interesting, isn't it? Basically, overnight index market swap points have priced in um, no more than a 25 basis cut over the course of the year which would suggest that you know that the forecast for growth are okay um, and that inflation is a, is a direct concern uh, I don't think either of those are true um, so I think going forward I mean if they cut by 50 basis points we'll start to see a uh, demise of the euro once again Ross, it's Maura here in Asia. I, I've been getting kind of conflicting views on where the U.S. dollar is going to be this year. I've heard some people say that we can see continued dollar strength until the second half of the year where we will essentially see a collapse in the U.S. dollar. Do you, do you belong to that camp? Well, I believe we're going to see the, uh, the dollar weaken off. You know, as, I mean, at the moment, markets are still driven by uncertainty and risk aversion, and we're finding you know, still support in the dollar. But I think you know, going ahead um, through the course of the year, as stock markets begin to pick up, I mean, you know, some are forecast that they could pick up as, as fast a pace as, as they fell you know, through 2008. So it's at that point where you know, investors with idle capital are going to start looking for their returns. Um, and that's not going to be in the US dollar, given the, you know, the, the yield disadvantage that that holds, where rates will remain for some period of time at extraordinary low levels. Well, it's interesting, Ross. I mean, I agree with Maura. It's been tough to get a feel for it with every day we talk. And now the pattern is when risk aversion comes into vogue, it's first the yen and then it's the dollar. And it's tough to predict or forecast anything right now. But can you give us a few of your uh, near term and mid term, you know, benchmarks for something like the, the euro dollar? The euro dollar, we, would, we should imagine that we're still going to see support there um, in, the, in the 130s. Going forward over the next couple of months, um, I would suggest. I would say, you know, if the ECB do cut interest rates by 50 basis points, um, you know, we're, we're going to still continue to see, you know, dollar strength. Um, let's talk about sterling too. I mean, we had obviously the, the um, interest rate decision from the Bank of England uh, last week, yeah. uh, historic lows. We didn't see mm. much movement really, did we, in sterling? Where do we go next? Well, we didn't see much movement. I mean, given, I mean, an awful lot of things have been priced into, you know, the dollar economy that we have and, and reflecting through the pound. Um, going forward, you know, perhaps we may see an easing in interest rate cuts. Um, and that would allow the pound to, you know, maybe, especially against the euro, I would say, I hope, uh, we're going to start seeing the euro weaken off against the pound going forward. OK, thanks very much for that, uh, Ross. Ross Berland there, uh, head of corporate dealing at Rational FX.